right up to the front here. Uh, it's really special, and I, I like to um, express that, as I keep saying to people I talk to. So thank you all, and uh, just remember my mom walked beside you on the here. Thank you. When you're fighting against cancer, is surrounding yourself with positive people, putting yourself in a positive environment, and setting yourself goals. You know, I kept telling myself, by 2016, I want to be on a riverbank, fishing and camping and laughing with my family. And by Christmas, I was sitting on a riverbank and I was fishing and I was camping with my family. I have good days and I have some bad days and I struggle with emotions, but other days are filled with happiness and laughter. I have discovered um, just how strong I am and how much determination I have. Each day is a gift and I'm truly grateful for it. And it's always good to have someone um, beside you through this process instead of being uh, alone in a room um, having your chemo and radiation treatment. Um, I had a friend with me the whole time that would do the walking uh, and sit with me through chemo and radiation. Just understanding the treatment process, having um, someone that's willing to sit with you and not look at the time and hear your concerns through, through treatment, which really, really helps along the process. We have the best job in Australia. We are so proud of what we do and we'd love for everybody else to be able to do what we do. You know, for the mob to come there, just sit, chill out, not have to think about their cancer. And um, so we, um, we do painting, we've done weaving, we do dream catches. And it's about, you know, the mob just sitting there having a yarn and doing activities and not having to worry about their cancer or where they're actually at. Just to let them know that if, you know, you do go and have those tests and they do become up positive, that that's just the start of creating another family around you. It's not being isolated or anything like that. That's where Trish and I will really step in and just support you the whole way through um, because it's just such an important part is, is having the support, not just in the community, but when you're in the hospital, that's, that's when it's really isolating. And as you know, mob like to work as mob, not just as one visitor at a time. So it's, it's getting the staff to understand how important just some of the cultural needs for our clients are. And, and I want the message to get out all over the place and I want to be able to share the resources and what we do um, to help support anyone else that wants to start to run a few programs like we do. So here's Wendy, um, just to finish off, and, and if I can just share the essence of, of her message was, cancer is a story that is better shared. By connecting through a yarning circle, women bond and reach out, and in doing so, they take back some control in their relationships, help strengthen their community and their families' resilience, raise awareness of the importance of being cancer aware, early detection and screening, how to connect with health services and overcome some of their personal fears and not be defined by cancer. This art and this, this context, the turtle represents coming together, sharing ideas, stories, knowledge to take back to our communities. It also represents two organisations, two worlds coming together for our Aboriginal people. And that's the way she ended the workshop and we were like, wow, that is just amazing. I'm really happy to be here because already I'm going, oh, there's so much that can be done. People are already doing and people are so friendly and helpful and um, offering their you know, own experiences and, and give us contact details and stuff. So I really appreciate all that. Um, and I'm hoping that between Walgett, Bree and Burke, we're often, you know, involved in Bilamuji uh, Corporation and um, it'd be really good if we can also support each other as a network in the future with this. A lot of it could be really easily done too. It's just kind of getting a bit creative, I think, and, and, and understanding the value in it. So thank you for showing me some of that because there's some really great ideas I think that I can take back home and, and do with no money at all, essentially. You know, it's just about being creative and, and thinking outside the square a little bit. So thank you. Sorry, so just remember, link in with everyone and reach out and, and share all this sort of stuff and support each other. 
Because as you can see, it will come back around again. So um, just so you know, this is, you know, it's not just a talk fest. This is where you'll really get some stuff done. I'm hearing a common theme across the room, you know, people feeling remote and isolated and alone. Whereas we've got a group of people here who are motivated to want to make change. And so let's go around the room, as I said earlier in the day, and talk to someone you haven't met before exchange contacts and talk about what news can bring together. You know, with this impact of uh, social media, you know, we could make a big group here together and so that everyone is kept informed about what news are doing in your area. We're interested in connecting and supporting services because we're not just doing research for research sake, we're doing it to make a difference for our more. Cancer's affected my family as I'm sure it has everyone else in this room and we have to actively do something about it. We have a National Indigenous Cancer Network that's an online resource and so people can go on and get information from there. We constantly try and update it and we're actually extending that to an International Indigenous Cancer Network. trying to identify the needs of the carers of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people with cancer. So the families and the carers today were wanting to put more of a focus on them. So what we're hoping to do, and if you think your area would be interested in this, we'd be really happy to talk to you, because what we want to do is gather the stories of the caregivers of Indigenous cancer survivors and find out what their needs are. How would they like to be supported? What information would they need to actually help them walk the road and the pathway with the um, cancer survivor? And to get um, a better outcome for our mob, we have to deal with lots of different things. It's multifaceted, multi-level. So we have to deal with the political environment, we have to deal with the healthcare system, we have to deal with the social cultural sort of issues, we have to deal with communication and the individual's experience, and a whole range of factors. These are just some that you know, I've been putting together and constantly changing. So you know, it's not just one thing, it's a range of different things. collect information about our services and I think when you're setting up new programs it's really good to just work out where you're at to collect some data to just work out the level of need within your community and it helps you plan programs basically funding agencies they want data was surgery successful was treatment successful was vaccinations actually successful in preventing the, the onset of uh, particular cancers. That's the, that's the data that I'm excited about. Uh, transportation is very much something uh, that can be a hit and a miss. Some of our services have, um, have transportation, but it's, you know, there's quite a few out there that don't. And that becomes a real problem, particularly where you've got to then transport a person from a, a home or an AMS to a hospital that's hundreds of k's away. Uh, that, that becomes really problematic. But we need, we need as a group, a state-based group, uh, whether it be through an advisory um, committee or a reference group or whatever, we really need to hone down to what data is required, what is quality data. We don't want crap in, crap out. We want data in that's going to be useful for us to then provide a meaningful and very positive and good quality service delivery. That's where I'd like to head. So, I'm talking about implementing the supportive care needs um, assessment tool for Indigenous people into routine cats care in Australia. So the tool's been developed, and now we're um, training people and saying, if you would like to implement this in your service, we'll support you in whatever way that you can to do that. Um, by providing you the tool, providing you some additional resources on how it might be used. So what this tool does is try and identify from the patient's perspective what is it that the patient would like some support with. This actually does resonate our little 
Aboriginal Health Service in our small little town. Um, we have a doctor one day a week. It's, it's come to light that we actually strengthen our community because we have many things outside of just a doctor visiting one day. We have outreach programs coming in. We're actually accept, um, contacted by the other health service in town who have three doctors. Um, they can't organise an uh, appointment or transport or anything, so they're actually using us. So they build our strength. Our strength is built daily, weekly, um, because of the need um, for our, our mob to be better, uh, be healthier. That, to me, shows great strength because we, we do more um, beyond our scope, really. Okay. Was survivor. Yeah, we are survivors. We've been here for a long, long time. You know, and we're always fighting a system, especially our health system, you know, to move forward and make things right for our mob. So I think that card is um is me and, and is Kyla. We're always fighting because what we do, we want it out there everywhere. And we'll keep fighting until we get there. So as a survivor we will do that. to build trust with our community, to work in our community. And it meant that uh, we have to keep our word, meant that we have to be uh, honest and transparent, and also everything that we did was from a community base. So that involved elders and families with the planning of the programs and events out there from the start, not planning something and going in and, and asking if it's okay, like starting from the start, this is, we have a little bit of money, um, we have a few ideas, let's do this together. And out of that came the Barrable Memorial Cup. Last year was huge, and then we're expecting over a thousand registrations for players. And yeah, almost uh, it's going to be 11 schools at this one this year. We want to take our clients alongside us. We want to walk alongside them on their journey, and not just tell them what to do, but actually find out what is going to work best for them. But but our kids about is our most recent. And what we did is we actually filmed in. Um, Delegate Aboriginal Preschool in Kempsey, as well as in Coffs Harbour. So we were able to um, utilise our own young people from community and the aunties who work in, the, in there and singing in language. And it was, it was a fantastic campaign that went on to commercial television. It's really interactive and that's what I love about what we do is that we can come at this from so many different angles. It's education, but it's entertainment because we know people learn when they're having fun. And it's amazing how well humour helps to get your message across. Trish was saying we are a holistic service, so we cater for women whatever journey they might be on. Um, so with the TIS program, we encourage women to reduce smoking levels and achieve better outcomes. We provide opportunistic support wherever the client is on their journey. Everything we do goes like into the community for community. We have developed a, a tobacco trigger diary. It makes you jot down when you pick up a smoke, um, who you're with, what time of day it is, what are you doing, and how you're feeling. So at the end of every week, people can look back and uh, identify their biggest smoking times where they need help. We've got grants available. They're released two times a year. Um, some of the projects that you've seen today highlighted are funded from our organisation through those grants mechanisms. So I would encourage you all to um, look out for those grants. We have a very um, fragmented approach to cancer in New South Wales. There is no consistent model. Um, and it depends upon who's allocating what resources where at the local level. Um, I would like to think that a lot of our grants could um, gather enough information to trigger a review of that within the system so we can have a look at a more cohesive approach. The take home message today for you all would be to have a look at what um, processes and partnerships are in place at the local level. If you don't have grant writers or access to um, any one at the local level, use your partnerships. How are we
we engaging with our own cultural protocols in online spaces, which are now extension of our lives? Um, how is it that we teach our young people around, about cultural protocols online? Um, there is nothing um, currently written or explored in the space. How do we transfer then those cultural protocols that we have and we know into online spaces so that we can take care of each other for one and take care of young people, make sure they're taken care of and also make sure that they're acting in a culturally appropriate manner. what other AMSs are doing around cancer and you know, tests has been a real eye-opener for me. So we're all AMSs, we all get funding, it's usually the same funding. Yes, my AMS may not get what your AMS does, but your AMS gets the same as this AMS. Our reporting is the same, we're required to collect the same data so why are we all on three or four different systems and having four or five different templates, you know? Mm. A state-based approach is something that me and Warren have said for a long time now. Wouldn't it be nice if New South Wales, as a collective group here, actually designed our internal KPIs that are actually going to give meaning, common sense and actual quality data, which allows for us to, to be target-specific groups and uh, implement CQI processes in the play accordingly. What does this look like for a communication strategy moving forward and what do we need to build and how can we support you so you're not out there trying to do it yourself yeah. on top of everything else. We're really mindful of that. We know that you've got workloads that are already above your head. So what we need is for you to talk to us about what you need. Opportunity for us to make sure we've got good, strong communication strategies. But a threat to our communication strategy is if we don't have some good, robust, you know, supports built in from a social emotional well-being of workers who maybe are, are advertising or communicating and you know we've got trolls who are coming out after them on the thing. This business is men's business, so we have to respect that. And I think uh, that, that needs to have a lot of discussion at some stage down the track with the litter to uh, our men's community groups in a, a very cultural, respective uh, way. Skill set, for example, knowing how to write grants, to apply for these grants with the funding. You know, um, maybe we can, an opportunity might be um, offering short courses or like, um, certificate, like to get these little certificates so they have a better understanding of what they could write in order to get this funding or in order to get these resources. I first started doing research in cancer. Um, there were a lot of people and primary health care services in our community who didn't want to talk about cancer. And so to me, having a, uh, having a group like this and having more and more people wanting to talk about cancer and what can they do about it, I think is really, really encouraging. Mm -hmm. But what we have to do is continue to support and continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been said before. It's not just a one-off conversation, not just a one-off meeting that it needs to be constantly 